the easiest way to help a good hypnotic subject to learn self-hypnosis is to include in the induction a post-hypnotic suggestion such as you'll be able to hypnotize yourself. This is of course not all that is required for it is also necessary to give some explanation and instruction on the following way. It sounds very <coughs> easy to <coughs> to give a simple post-hypnotic suggestion on the above lines and then prescribe a simple ritual such as counting and including a phrase such as and when you get to 10 you will drift off into a hypnotic state and be able to make your own hypnotic suggestions to yourself but it is not quite as easy as this for a number of important points must be taken into consideration as I have mentioned previously, unless you consider the hypnotic subject is capable and realistic and not likely to make foolish suggestions which could harm which could be harmful, it is inadvisable to teach him self hypnosis. Again, in the interests of those who are taught self hypnosis, a number of self protective suggestions can be included, such as if anyone should knock on the door or enter the room in which you are carrying out a self-suggestion session, you will become instantly wide awake and alert. Also, when giving these protective post-hypnotic suggestions to your subject, you can include, if at any time, whilst you are in a self-induced hypnotic state, you overhear any remarks, they will not influence you. <clears throat> this later links up with a further suggestion of only thoughts which are constructive and for your own good, will register in your unconscious mind. <clears throat> Another protective suggestion which can be included to prevent advantage being taken of the increased suggestibility created in your patient is, <clears throat> no one will be able to hypnotize you unless you specifically ask for this to be done. If you should feel that an absolute veto is indicated, Make the post-hypnotic suggestion. <clears throat> no one will be able to hypnotize you unless you make the request in writing. If it is necessary for dental work or any other reason, you will write your request and give it to your doctor or hypnotherapist. Another suggestion which is advisable with some people is to include something on the following lines. You will never have any difficulty in waking yourself. If you do go into a deep hypnotic state, it will turn into a normal sleep from which you will wake refreshed and in a perfectly normal manner. When beginning instructions on methods of self-hypnosis, if your subject or patient has no general acquaintance with psychological ideas, I would recommend that you start by giving in a general idea of how the unconscious mind controls and influences many of our bodily functions, moods, and mental attitudes, and then explain to him how, through use, using self-suggestion, this unconscious mind itself can be influenced. The manner in which a hypnotist or a hypnotherapist talks to his patient alters. One moment he is explaining or describing something and offering reasons reassurances or proof of the soundness and the truth of what he says. In short, submitting what he says to the patient's critical faculty and the next moment he is speaking in an authoritative fashion with no intention or desire that what he says should be analysed or argued about. Broadly speaking, we could say that when talking to people that we either submit what we are saying to their critical minds or completely disregard the individual's attitude and tell him. Very often in hypnotic treatment it is helpful to use this more emphatic or authoritative way of talking. This does not mean raising one's voice or being unduly emphatic, otherwise resistances or resentment might be aroused. When we explain anything to people, they participate by thinking about what we say, but when we tell them, they play a purely passive role of acceptance. 
When instructing in self-hypnosis, it is better to err on the side of being authoritative rather than too friendly and informal. Avoid smiling or making long pauses. For the hypnotist who smiles or who's, who is uneasy or hesitant makes his own work more difficult. The objective is, without arousing any resistance or resentment, to convey in your manner a firm authoritative attitude, and whilst being reassuring, not being too informal. This, must, this, this more authoritative style of talking is determined not only by the tone of the voice, but also by the choice of words. And in the following advice about instructing a patient in the hypnotic techniques, I have enclosed much of the text in quotation marks to indicate that the remarks are intended as an indication of the way in which to talk to a subject and are not addressed to the reader. After making some introductory remarks about the unconscious mind and explaining how it can influence how it can be influenced by hypnotic suggestion, I recommend beginning on the following lines. You can also you can help yourself a great deal by using self hypnosis. After I have explained more about self hypnosis, I will hypnotize you and make a post hypnotic suggestions to you that you will be able to hypnotize yourself. This will be this will enable you to give your self a hypnotic treatment every day if you wish to do so. Once you have mastered these techniques, you will not need my help. When I hypnotize you, or you hypnotize yourself, you must not have the expectation of going off into some extraordinary mystical realm. It is simply a pleasant, relaxed experience. Actually, you pass through this state twice every day without being aware of it once when you wake up in the morning and again when you go to sleep. This transition from sleep to waking is not as sudden as it appears. Just as we drop off to sleep, there is a rapid fading out of awareness, but briefly, just before we lose consciousness, we pass through what is called a hypnagogic state of consciousness. This is the borderland between the conscious and the unconscious mind. But our passage through this state is so brief that on awakening, we have no memory of it. In the hypnotic and self-induced hypnotic states, normal consciousness is withdrawn and sinks, as it were, beneath the surface of your mind until it approaches the borderland or no man's land which divides your conscious from your unconscious mind. But <clears throat> instead of sinking into oblivion, awareness remains poised midway between the conscious and the unconscious mind and linked with both. It is because it is linked with both that it can relay instructions and suggestions to your unconscious mind. This relaying is carried out by letting your suggestions silently pass through your mind. In this state you are talking to yourself and this is actually what is happening for your conscious mind is talking to or instructing your unconscious mind what to do you could think of your conscious mind as the one who plans like the manager of a business and your unconscious mind as the workers sometimes the manager has to go down to the workshops himself and instruct the workers in a similar way this is what you will be doing when you let yourself sink into a hypnotic state and your awareness approaches the borderland of the unconscious mind and gives it orders. Do not feel uneasy when I hypnotize you or when you hypnotize yourself, for I will make suggestions which will safeguard you. If your subject shows <clears throat> any signs of being ill, at ease, ask him if he has any misgivings or doubts, I say to him, do not feel uneasy. No harm can come to you. When I hypnotize you, I will make suggestions that you will relax and be at ease. Even without my suggestions, part of your unconscious mind will remain alert like a sentinel, just as it does when you are asleep. 
if this awareness did not remain, you would have no memory of dreaming, nor would you be awakened by any sort of noises. One part of your unconscious mind will be on duty to protect you whether you are hypnotized or asleep. You are asking your unconscious mind for its help, and you must trust it to look after you. If you go into a trance, when you hypnotize yourself, it will turn into a normal sleep.